So we begin with, there are more stars in the known universe than there are grains of sand on all the beaches of Earth. There are trillions of galaxies, and galaxies have billions and trillions of stars. The universe is incomprehensibly large. And in time, 13.8 billion years, 13.8 thousand million years. And some physicists theorize that the Big Bang is just like one breath in a series, like the universe expands and then contracts into a ball and then expands again. Now, if we want to talk about um, an ultimate ground of existence and that idea of God, but let's personalize it for purposes of this discussion. So let's suppose we have this idea of the absolute that has created all of this universe, but that idea is so beyond us, the size, the age. So we're going to kind of shrink it down a bit because after all, we just evolved from mammals, from apes, and our brains are pretty impressive. We've accomplished a lot, but that doesn't mean we can take in that kind of creator, if we talk in personal terms. So one thing to do is to cut the creator, and I could say him, because usually if we personify, personify God, at least in um, Christianity, which I'm familiar with, God is a he. Uh, Mary in, Christian, in Catholicism comes close to being like a divine mother God, but she's not God. But she, in some sense, fulfills that role. But gods in Christianity are he's. Okay, so we're going to shrink God into something we can understand, a he, a person, or oh, a divine person with all sorts of powers, but he's a person. Or a, a personal being, like, like I believe Allah is thought of as, as a person, but not, any, and not a person, not a God who incarnated. Whereas in Christianity and in uh, Hinduism, like Krishna is a God who incarnated, in Christianity, of course, that's Jesus. And so, there we'd even make God more understandable, more um, suitable to ourselves. So a, a God that's like uh, um, Brahman of the impersonal Brahman of the Hindus is maybe hard to comprehend. But someone like Jesus, who actually walked among us, whose words we have, that's human size. Um, but then we could take another step. Uh, let's think about the age of the universe. Let's suppose that the universe was created really 10,000 years ago. For easy math, if you consider a generation 50 years, that would mean two people born a century. So that would mean 200 generations ago, the earth was created. And 200 is a big number, but it's not unimaginably large. So we're bringing it down again. And here, maybe we're bringing it down further than it should be brought down. We're cutting and uh, making God smaller and smaller. But now we can work on the other end of time. Rather than seeing a future that's going to extend for hundreds or thousands of years, we talk about the end times, when Jesus is coming and the world is going to end. And maybe that's even tomorrow, who knows? And now, Look what we've done. At each step, we're not telling the full truth. At each step, we're kind of getting rid of more and more so that God is more adaptable, and more relatable to us. But at some point in those stages, I think it goes beyond what it should. I think that human beings should be able to realize that the universe is old and huge. Now that kind of dents our ego. But if you believe in God, you'd say, yeah, in, in, in relation to God, my, my ego looks pretty small. I look insignificant, yeah. And uh, uh, we should be able to do that. And that 
maybe speaks to our smallness, but also to the greatness of God. But I think some people don't want to feel small. And so we go a step further where people who have that end time and beginning time, well, some of the groups are right and some of them don't have the right theology. I heard a radio preacher once say that if you weren't baptized by immersion, you were going to hell. So now it's even smaller. It's not even all the, the, the Christians. It's a small group. Uh, this is, I think, beneath what the highest human potential can achieve. I mean, I, I, it's understandable. It's human cutting God down smaller and smaller. But at some point, I think it's not right. Now, the next step is when a ruler is declared as God, as the pharaohs were, as living gods. Now it's becoming even smaller, not an historical person like Jesus, but a person who's alive, you can actually see. And I believe I read um, before World War II, the Japanese considered their emperor as such or something similar. I'm not an expert. And uh, maybe in a sense, then going from a living person that's said to be a god, which I think few people would accept today, maybe you can soften that and say, well, this person is God's representative. God speaks through this person. And here, again, things are getting smaller. You have like one supreme leader who you should follow. Life gets easier in a way. I mean, it might be hard to follow what the leader says, but it's easier in that you don't have to make up your mind. And I should mention uh, somewhere along the line, people who feel they have a personal relationship with Jesus, that Jesus is with them. I guess that gets really close. How can you make God more fit inside you, small enough to fit inside you, than say that you have a relationship with that God? Uh, I mean, not that God isn't greater, but th th there's a piece that we humans can really grasp. Now, sadly, that idea of a relationship with Jesus, uh, if it's tested in a certain way, it fails. Or maybe that's not the right way to test it. But for instance, if you asked people who said they have a relationship with Jesus about what does Jesus think about X? What does Jesus think about abortion or homosexuality or a uh, large military budget? Or what does Jesus think about immigrants or uh, universal health care? Whatever. And the list could be extended. That the people will give you different answers. And if they were both talking to Jesus, you'd think they'd get the same answer. But I think there's a value to that feeling that God is with you. And maybe God is with you in the sense that if God is consciousness, consciousness you could think of as like a light. It's not saying anything. But if it lights you up, it lights up your, con your, your, your mind, lights up your life, then you have an awareness. Then you do have a relationship with God. And it's it's. It's valid, and that kind of testing I just mentioned really isn't appropriate. And that kind of, for me, throws suspicion on these preachers who say they know what God wants us to do. Uh, there was a preacher, I remember Hurricane Katrina in New Orleans, 2002, 2003, four, whatever, I don't remember the year. And a preacher said that God had allowed the hurricane to sweep through New Orleans because I think New Orleans had had a gay parade or something to do with gays. And I thought, so God wanted to punish the city? Well, I remember reading that, a, I believe an entire nursing home, or at least a large majority of a nursing home, the patients in, a, in, a, in some sort of a retirement community, drowned. So this was God's punishment, drowning a, a, a home of retired people in their 70s, 80s, and 90s. Uh, so I think often people who say they speak for God, I, I don't believe them. I mean, they might be saying good things, but for centuries, the uh, Catholic Church said that we had to kill witches. Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. It's in the Bible. 
for centuries, people in the United States and in the, in the South, especially, had slaves. And both of them, if you'd asked them, I'm sure would have said that they were right, that it was okay with God. So to sum up, I would say that if you take God, that people who open, open themselves up to God are like doing something that most people don't do. And I read once in India, supposedly, uh, if someone actually merges with God, becomes so close that they become one, that uh, they just lose all consciousness of their body and eventually the body dies. But that's okay because they've merged. Anyway, we have that kind of God, but then God, we have to, we have to accept some limitation because most people, and maybe what I just said isn't even true, but even if it's true, the great majority of humanity is never going to do that. So we have to make God somewhat small to relate at all. But there's a limit, and I'm not sure, exactly sure where I would put it, but there's a limit where it gets to be a bad process. It becomes too small. It becomes, um, it doesn't ask that humanity live up to its highest potential. Rather, it, it kind of uh, addresses humanity's lower um, tastes or traits. Thanks for listening.